Who won the edge? Uh, it's the Adventure Club with Josh. That's me. I am the host of this show. And as you, uh, as you very, very well know, one of my favorite bands in, uh, in the whole wide world is Bright Eyes. And we are lucky enough not only to have Mr. Connor Oberst of Bright Eyes come up and uh, play some songs for you guys, but he also is uh, going to do a short interview. So thank you, sir, for taking time out of uh, what, what is, I'm sure, an extremely busy schedule. Thank you. Thank you. So, how, uh, I guess, first off, how's the tour going so far? Last night in Austin, there was a little weirdness. Yeah, everything's, I mean, in general, it's been great. It's kind of, uh, there's so many of us that logistically has been, at the beginning was sort of nightmarish, but now we got our system down and kind of a well, the 19 headed monster. <laughs> You said there's what, like 20 people on the road? 20 with you? people traveling, 14 musicians, and then just, you know, all the, all the other helpers. Yeah. Is it, is it sort of weird after a while when you're on the road, like very brotherly and sisterly? Like there's, you know, little skirmishes start here, little skirmishes start there, and it's just. Yeah. It's been real interesting with so many people. Like it, it's hard to, uh, I guess it's hard to mm, have so many personalities interacting all the time. But uh, it's also an advantage that you aren't necessarily s stuck with the same people all the, you know, every day, day in and day out because there's, you know, there's enough people that you can go a while without, you know, having a conversation or whatever. But everyone's really nice and getting along, and so it's, it's working out. Well, I'm sure that this is something you've answered a couple times, but it doesn't mean we won't ask it again. Uh, whenever you were making this record which has, you know, a much bigger and, and grandiose sound. Did you know when you were going to go out on the road that you were definitely going to do it like this? No. After the record was done, we sort of... I came to the realization that most of the songs really depended on the big band sound, and me and Mike were just kind of looking at each other like, what, what are we going to do? You know, how is this? How are we going to do this? And fortunately, like it worked out that, you know, we, we figured out that it, we could pull it off and, you know, have a, if we did it kind of all in one fell swoop, because normally we wouldn't do like, the, this tour is like all of the US and Canada all at once. Normally we kind of do it coast at a time sort of thing because we live in the middle, but uh, I guess we decided that we just go for it and kind of worked out that we could, I guess financially afford to do it that was the biggest question you know and then just obviously getting enough people to give up their lives for eight weeks yeah. to go do it is sort of another problem but it all worked it's all working well for people who uh who did not get to see bright eyes when they came through either dallas austin houston uh what all instruments are actually on stage on stage we have uh there's three drummers there's a drum set and then there's like timpanis timbales um other like marching snare drums and, and percussion and stuff. And then let's see, concert chimes, which are those big tub tubular uh, curtain like yeah. things. Um, vibraphone, uh, cello, violin, trumpet, euphonium, flute, clarinet, bassoon, pedal steel, banjo, mandolin, electric guitars, piano, uh, another keyboard. Um, I'm not leaving anybody out. All right, so we put out the uh, the word. I was telling you about this on the drive over here. We put out the word to Adventure Club listeners for them to uh, to write in with things that they wanted to know about Bright Eyes. And so, if you don't mind, I have uh, this uh, this long list, this laundry list of uh, of questions for you. Okay. Let's see. We start off with something easy. What are you listening to now? Pretty simple. Uh. <laughs> favorite records now a days um there's a band called rilo kylie that we're the saddle creek's about to put out from california i've been listening to their new record a lot it's really great and i need one of those by the way i'll get you one. okay thanks <laughs> and then uh who else um actually matt matt ward the guy that we're on tour with m ward is his records are amazing and 
I've been listening to him. I've listened to the new Spoon album. It's great. Um, I don't know. There's a few off the top of my head, I guess. All right. What's the last movie you saw in the theater? This usually gets most bands because most bands don't have time to go to a movie. Theater. I just, I was thinking, I know, I, I think we saw a movie on this trip. I'm just, I can't remember what it, what it was. God, I'll think about that. I, we'll I know I can answer that. But. We'll pass and come back. Uh, let's see. Here's actually a pretty good one. You talk a lot about your family in your records and how do they feel about having their lives talked about? <laughs> well, they're, uh, depending on which member of the family. <laughs> no, they're, they're all pretty cool about, you know, they, I guess, know me and appreciate the music to the point where, you know, they don't, object too much to like references to them or anything I, I and partly they've gotten used to it i guess you know i think some deal with it better than others I don't know. uh let's see is there going to be a new day Paracitos album coming soon i'd like there to be but uh it's just right now it's time is against me um how long is this tour going to last before you actually have some downtime to do, you know, more Desparcito stuff or even more Bright Eye stuff, I guess? Well, this tour will go till October 24th and then I go home for a week and then I go back out to New York and then to uh, Europe for like five weeks. Mm. So I'll actually be home for good around like the middle of December and then sort of plans for the new year. I just haven't made any, but... I mean, I know that Denver and Ian and the dudes in the band. I mean, that everybody wants everyone wants to play, and I'm sure that they've they're scheming something. Let's see. This is uh, actually something pretty interesting. Which is your favorite Bright Eye song? I uh, I always like the you know the new ones. I guess I like the new songs. Uh, so. I don't know. It's sort of like I l like and dislike them all kind of equally. <laughs> it's hard to uh, pick favorites. And then there's also the idea of like there's the song in my head and like what I think of, of it as. And then there's like the physical recordings of the songs. Like there's some songs I think that I still like, but I cringe when I hear the recordings. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, like what? So, um, Any in particular you can like think of? Perfect Sonnet. I like the song, but I don't. I hear the recording. I'm just like, yeah. Like, just like, just mostly my voice. It's hard to hear your, yourself saying, yeah. you know? Okay, here's a good one. Are you dating someone now? I'll bet you $1,000 that I can tell you which girl wrote this. But <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, no, I, I am not. But as of like three weeks ago or something. Mm -hmm. So, sort of. I think you and I are on the exact same calendar. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Here's something that I'm guessing goes somewhat along with that. Is it weird to you that when you meet women, they probably already have a set idea of who you are? Definitely. It's weird. And I mean, women, but everybody too, you know, I mean, just you know, the phenomenon of, of people knowing or believing they know a lot about you through your music or through reading or something. And then I just always feel like at a disadvantage when I'm like, hey, nice to meet you, yeah. Connor. And they're like, you know. So you had a brother that died in a bathtub. Yeah. It's just like, I would think that the majority of people, because it's human nature to believe, you know, what you're being told, that when they listen to a song, they think that probably everything is not only true, but it's all about you. Yeah, people get hung up on what in the songs are autobiographical or not, you know? To me, it's sort of, it's kind of like you're missing the point because, you know, the, the point of the song to me is to have some kind of, I guess, I don't know what the right word, like truth or, you know, whatever the essence or message of the song, like that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to get to you by writing it, something that hopefully is universal enough that people can, take from it to you know 
related to their lives or maybe not related to their lives, but at least see some common like humanity in it. Uh, let's see. We have one more and then you have to remember what was the last movie you saw oh, yeah. in a theater. Don't forget about that. Oh, here we go. Is it strange to know that so many more people are listening now than let's say even when Fevers and Mirrors came out? Yeah, every, every, you know, time we put out an album, it seems to get a little crazier and more surreal. But uh, it's just something, I guess, I'm, I mean, I still struggle with it and just try to deal with it and like try to stay true to what I want to do and how I want to do it. You know, it's just, but obviously you can't avoid the idea that there's an audience, you know, I mean, it used to not be an issue at all, but now, you know, it's just, it's there and it's just one more factor in the whole thing, you know. Is it something you think about when you're writing? Is um, that many more, you know, does it ever cross your mind? Maybe I won't say that because. Yeah, you know. I mean, sure. It definitely, I, I, I wish it wouldn't, you know, I wish it wasn't the case, but it's just, like I said, it's impossible. I mean, and part of it is like, I mean, I think there's very, uh, direct references to that idea on the new record, you know, just part of what gives me clarity is to sing about, sing about things. You know, that's like why I like to write is because it, I'm just confused all the time. So if I can write something down and it makes sense to me, then it, you know, it's, it's just easier. It's better for me. And so, yeah, I guess it was sort of natural to write about that idea too, you know, <laughs> All right, last question. Movie you last saw in the theater? Um, can't get away without it. Just this person would hate you. I know. If I'm you can't seriously remember. trying to. You're remember. Just gonna have to make something up. Snow Dogs or Snow Barber <laughs> Shop or whatever. I just say name some terrible film. Some terrible movie. I, <laughs> I wish I could remember. I don't think. It was, I mean, what was that? Oh no, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's not my heart you're breaking. Just let me know. Yeah. We've uh It was Snow Dogs. <laughs> That's the answer. Cuba Gooding Jr. in Snow Dogs. <laughs> it was Snow Dogs. See? I told you. It was Snow Dogs. Weekend. Okay. There you go. Snow Dogs at the Dollar Cinema. <laughs> All right, thank you very much sure. for coming thank in. You. Thanks.